Welcome to today's Think on This Battle Ready Podcast. Please join us as we journey through the written Word of God in biblical truths and spiritual insights. We hope you enjoy today's podcast. God bless you. Hey, Bible Ready family, thank you for joining us tonight. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 1, verse 1, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. You know what, Brother Bryant? I really believe that if we would, you know, grasp, you know, a lot of the counsel that we can find in the Word of God, you know, especially Proverbs in the book of Psalms, there's so much wisdom and understanding in there. And even in verse 1, it holds a lot of weight where it says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. You know, the Bible says that there's safety in a multitude of counselors, correct? Uh, I think about 1 Kings in chapter 12, verse 8, where Rehoboam, instead of going to the elders to get, you know, advice on what he was to do, because Rehoboam was going to give 10 of the 12 tribes and Jeroboam would get two of the tribes. And instead of going, the Bible says, instead of going to the elders, he decided that he was going to go to his friends, right? And I really believe, and, and I want your input, what do you think you know, is the danger of not surrounding ourselves with men, <clears throat> men and women of God that are, give us godly counsel. <clears throat> There's a danger there. You know, uh, you you, you got to remember something. It says in that verse, blessed is the man. You want to be blessed? Then he says, don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. In other words, don't run to the ungodly for counsel. Amen. Go to those who are godly. Go to, in, in fact, go to the Lord. For, for, for guidance. But Rehoboam, he doesn't do that. What does he do? You know, the, 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 the elderly people, you know, we always said that the elderly, you know, they, they, they have wisdom because they live their life. They know, they, they know the in and outs. They know, you know, the life they, they went through. So he went to the elders and he, he asked them. And you know, in, in reality, the elders gave him a good, pretty good uh, advice. That's but, right. But he didn't follow it. Instead yes. of doing that, he goes to his his uh, 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 people, uh, you know, the te- teenagers or people his age. He said he goes to his people and he says, "Well, I'm going to go ask them yes. and see what they say." I'll tell yes. you what. You know, and you know, brother, I was thinking about this that a lot of people when they're going through th- through things, who do they who do they tend to circle themselves with? They tend to circle themselves with people that will accept their decision that they make. Right. You see it so many times. Instead of going and you know and getting counsel from you know men and women of God, that's with an alignment in the Word of God. They tend to run and lean towards people that accept their decisions, and you see it many times. You know, and it's something that we really need to watch for because of the fact that you know the Bible says, "Blessed is that man." Yes. That if you want the blessings of God, then there's things that God requires of us. And one of those things is, is to not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Listen, brothers and sisters, there's safety in the multitude of counselors. Amen. And we need to surround ourselves, right, Brother Brian? That's right. With men and women of God that hear from God. And I like, Brother Brian, I really like the, the second part. It says, nor stands in the path of sinners. Mm. And I believe, brother, that a church, I, I believe that the church, the body of Christ really, really has a lot of fault in this. Number one, how can you stand in the way of a sinner? Number one is having an attitude towards sinners that come into the church, maybe because of their appearance, maybe they don't look right, they don't fit the part, you know, and they come into the church and all of a sudden, you know, nobody wants to shake your hand, nobody wants to approach you, nobody wants to love bomb you, you That's know, right. they all kind of tend to just push away from you. Then all of a sudden, this person that is looking for, you know, some kind of hope, he, you know, he's sitting there like, well, geez, you know, I come here looking for hope. I come here looking for an answer to all my problems. And it's like I get shunned within this church, you know, and we can't do that. And the second thing is, is what I believe is we cannot, you know, say one thing and not live that very thing that we're saying. How is it going to look for us to tell the sinner that, you know, God says we shouldn't, you know, be a drunkard. We shouldn't be a fornicator and all these things. But in the same breath, people are seeing us doing the things contrary to the very things that we're trying to preach. And so it becomes hypocrisy. And so in that, we also stand in the path of sinners. Wouldn't you say, Brother Brian? That's right. That's right. Exactly. And, you know, and, and how many times have, you know, have, uh, have we stood in the way of sinners and, and discouraged them from coming to the Lord because of our, 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 our prejudgment? We judge them for how they look, 
how you know they come and they sit among us and you know I don't like that how they smell how they how they look at us so what do we do we 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 push them aside and people like that you know they they don't feel welcome in our that's churches right. and that's why they don't come because you know what uh, they come a stranger I've heard this said before brother uh, many will come in a stranger and yes. they leave a stranger yes 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 you know and it should be you know when when you meet somebody that's truly in a right relationship with God you, you know there's an old saying that says you're strangers but once yes now we're friends you know and that's why some of these denominations you know I'm not going to say them but there's certain denominations that love bomb new people that come in because they you know one of their ideology is is we need to show these people so much love and even though i mean and think about it these there's two organizations that will come knocking on your door and love bomb you and it's a sad thing when they're not even you know in alignment with the full counsel of god but yet you got the pentecostals that are shouting you know you know send the fire lord you know we got the power but won't even you know go and visit you know those who are you know fallen by the way are are trying to reach out you know to the to the lost right. and preach the gospel <clears throat> and, and that's sad because in essence brother that very church is standing in the way of sinners because you know they pride themselves more in the name that is above the the door than in the god of the house you know they pride themselves i put it this way they pride themselves more in the house of god than they do in the god of the house that's right brother and you know i'll tell you something that uh, while you were saying that this came to me you know, uh, Jesus experienced the same thing because he, the Bible says he, he went to the sinners, but he was shunned by the Pharisees. You know, look at, look at him. Why does he sit with sinners? Well, what, what, why is he, you know, taking, uh, 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 kind of like going with them and having that in, in the same company with sinners. They accused Jesus, but Jesus came back and he said, I didn't come to call the righteous. I called to come to sinners. That's right. Repentance. So don't, in order to make him do that, you, you have to go to them. See? And but yet he was accused. Yes. And lastly, it says, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Mm. You know, and so you have one that you have in, in one aspect, it says walk. And the next aspect, it says stand. Then in the last aspect, it says sit. You know, and we can't fall into any of these categories because right. it affects the, you know, the, the lost. You know, I don't want to stand before God and God say, you know, you were a stumbling block unto the sinner. I sent mm. this person to you and you know you stood in the path of this person or I sent this person to you and you sat in the seat of the scornful and you know what that's not good as as believers we need to show Christ in all aspects brother don't that's you right. believe yes. and you know just like you said when Jesus sat with the sinners the religious were the ones that attacked him yep. you know but the thing is I like about him is it didn't affect Jesus no. you know he he went to the tax collectors he went to the sinners you know he he told the adult woman who that was caught in adultery, you know, neither do I hold this against you. Amen. You know, he lived, you know, he lived his life. He lived what he preached and he was a prime example of how we should be, right? Amen. And That's then right. verse two, I like how it says, but his delight, talking about blessed is the man, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and his law, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a river planted. He shall be like a tree planted by the river of water that brings forth its fruit mm. in its seasons, whose leaf shall also not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Think about that, brother. A tree planted by the river yes, that brings forth fruit in its season. That's you right. see, are we producing fruit? Are we, first of all, showing the fruits of the Spirit? Because if we're not showing the fruits of the Spirit, then I guarantee you we're falling under the walking in the counsel of the ungodly, or we're standing in the path of sinners, or we're sitting in the seat of the scornful. But if we are showing the fruit, then we can produce fruit. Right, brother? <clears throat> That's right. I, I, I like that verse too. It says, he, His delight is in the law of the Lord. Listen, His delight is in the Word of God. That's right. He loves the Word. And when you become a believer, you, you can't, I mean, you can't wait to get that word in you. You want to hear what God has to say and, and you get it in you. And then he meditates in the word. Joshua 1.8, he told him, he says, meditate in, in, in the things of God. He, Joshua was, was told to meditate upon these things. And that's exactly, uh, amen, what he did is meditating on the word of God and getting in your spirit. And uh, amen, and I pray that God give us a hunger. Word. That's right. That's right. Now, listen, brothers and sisters, the Bible says that if we are to do these things, we shall be like a tree planted by the river. Mm. Listen, it's about time that we take roots by the river of God, amen, and into the things of God. It's about time that we press into the heart of God and live 
Christ-like and be that written epistle read and seen by all men. You know, Brother Brian, I don't want to be, you know, like the like the Bible says, I don't want to be the, the un, like the ungodly that are like shaft, which are, you know, which the wind drives away. I don't want to be here today and gone tomorrow. That's right. I want to be that written example for all, you know, men and women to see the Christ in me, the hope of glory. And in verse 5 and 6, it says, Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Yes. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly perishes. That's right. Close us in saying a few words, brother. We need to take it serious. He says, listen, you'll bear much fruit. In, in John chapter 15, he says three things. Bear some, bear more. But then at the end, he says, bear much fruit. And that's what God wants us to do. We don't want to be like the chaff that blows the, that the wind blows away, because then the, then we have no sustenance, we have nothing, okay. But the ungodly will not stand. The in in our sinners in the congregation of the righteous. There's a, there's there, there's a separation there. What he's talking about. The Lord knows the way of the righteous. He knows your way. He knows the path you should take. Amen. God knows all about that. But the way, listen. That there's a way of the righteous that follow after the Lord. But the last uh, sentence says, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So if we continue on that, on that path of, the, of ungodliness and doing it your way, the Bible says many will perish in, in that time. And I'll tell you what, you don't want to be there. You want to be that blessed man. If you enjoyed today's podcast, we ask that you would consider supporting this ministry. You can be a part of sharing the gospel to the lost through your financial support. God bless you.